We glorify you, we praise you, we lift you up for you are God and you are God all by yourself. We thank you. We thank you because you are coming. Yes, you are. You're coming like a thief in the night, Father. And we thank you, Father, for dying for us. We thank you, Father, for you being God all by yourself. Father, we thank you, Father, for what you're getting ready to say to us on today, Father. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise, Father. As I say every time I mount the sacredness, I believe I've done what I've asked you to what you asked me to do, Father. I've studied. Now we depend on your Holy Spirit to speak to us. In the name of Jesus, Father, let this word, let it let it go out with clarity and with understanding, Father. And Father, we'll be so careful to always give your name the glory, honor, and praise. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we will always pray. Amen. If you believe God's going to do something and say something to you today, can you open up your mouth one more time? Hallelujah. It's your good, your praise. First lady, just a few of us, but the glory is here. He's here. Hallelujah. And while we're clapping, can we celebrate our leader in his absence? The angel of his house, Pastor Mustafa. Come on. We can do better than that. Let's celebrate our pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God every time he allows me, amen, to mount this sacred disc. And can we celebrate my my homie, our first lady? And the first lady, my best friend in my life. Amen. Amen. Can you clap it up for yourselves today? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go too quickly to the word of God. I won't be before you long, but there is a word from the Lord. Let's go to uh, John chapter number 11. Amen. John chapter number 11. I know the screen says 47, but we're going to really begin reading at verse number 45. Is that okay? Amen. Hallelujah. And then y'all excited to hear what the Lord has to say? I'm excited. I'm excited. Amen. Y'all there, John 11, 45. Amen. Amen. It says, Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Yes, sir. Verse 47. They gathered the chief priests, the Pharisees, a council and said, what do we for this man do with many miracles? Mm -hmm. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Cyphus being the high priest that same year came unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation uh, perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Yeah. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Our concluding verse, verse 53. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together to put him to death. Uh, they took counsel together to put him to death. I want to talk about today uh, the great exchange. I want to talk about the great exchange. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, y'all know I like to walk the Bible. Y'all gonna work with me, amen. Amen. So, in order for us to really understand, amen, what is happening in John chapter number eleven, it's imperative that we go to John chapter number ten to get a clear understanding of why we got to where we are in our text. Uh, when we go to John chapter eleven, Lady Nail, around verse number twenty-two, we find out that Jesus is in Jerusalem, yeah. Uncle. We find out that he's in the Jerusalem at a feast, Lady Nail, mm -hmm. and he's at this feast, and the Jews are surrounding him, and the people are surrounding him, and they're saying something to him, Alex. They're saying, "How long are you going to wait uh, for us uh, to really find out if you are the Christ?" What they really were trying to do, Shanae, they were trying to get Jesus to prove that he was the son of the living God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus, I love Jesus because he answered them very strategically. He said, 
um, uh, I've already told you who I am, and if you don't believe uh, who I am, um, if, if you don't believe in what I have already told you, you should see my works uh, and see the things that I have done in my Father's name. What I love about this Kanika is that Jesus, he really doesn't engage into a long dialogue with him. Uh, he does. He really does engage in a long dialogue with him. He really doesn't try to uh, convince these people uh, of who he is uh, because they've really already is made a conscious decision not to believe that he is the Christ. And I came to tell somebody that this is not the season, auntie, where we uh, have to really start explaining to people about who we are in God because there are already folks who choose not to believe. There are already folks who have made a conscious decision uh, not to support us even while we, as we already say, are being world changers or trying to change the world. So this is not really the season for us to really be doing a whole lot of explaining to people. Uh, most of us are really wasting our time, Alex, trying to convince people to believe something that they've already chose not to believe. Right. And so Jesus, Kanika, he, he tells them, I'm not worried about you, but he tells them, he says, but my sheep, they know my voice. Yes, uh, I'm not worried about y'all, but my sheep already know who I am. Then uh, Jeremiah, he says something strategic that really made them upset, uh, Latoya. He tells them, he says that me and God are one. Me and my father, we are one. They get upset because they say, how can Jesus, how can you, this man, be one with God? So they try to stone him, Lady Nell. They tried to, they were, they were ready to kill him. Now people, now can I pause here? People will always try to kill you when you know who you are in God. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, is that there's people that are really envying us because we know who we are in God. I, and there are people that really don't understand who they are in God. And so they're getting upset at you because you got a confidence in who you are connected to. Oh. So they were upset because they didn't really understand how can a man say that he's one with God, but they didn't understand that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. See, people will always get upset when they don't understand your connection to God. It's not my fault that you have not sucked him out for your assignment with him. That ain't my problem. In my problem. I know who I am. I know I'm a world changer. I know he's called me to go into the darkness and declare light in the earth. I know that he's called me to bring glory to his name. Now, if you don't know that, that's your problem. But I know my assignment. I know it. I know my assignment. Jesus, Jesus, she, they get upset. They try to storm him again. They try to kill him because they say, oh my God, how can you say it? They said, this is blasphemy. And Jesus says, how can you say this is blasphemy? You don't really know who I am. See, that's why you got you to gotta get to the point where you look at people and say, you don't really know who you're talking to. You don't really know who you're talking to. Matter of fact, if you really knew who I was, my des your destiny is connected to me. But you don't know that. They don't know that. I feel the Holy Ghost He's now. Here. I feel it now. And so Jesus, Jesus, Shanae, he does something strategic. As they're getting ready to stone him, he exits. He, he leaves. Yeah. He, 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 he stops explaining and he exits. And when I heard this, uh, 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 Minister Alex, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, this is your season uh, for you to get out of circles with people that don't believe God. This is your season to stop by two of his sisters named Mary and Martha. Uh -huh. The Bible says something strategic that, 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 that someone sends word to Jesus that Lazarus, who is Jesus' good friend, uh, they tell Jesus, Lady Nell, they tell him uh, that Lazarus is sick. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, they tell him that Lazarus is sick, uh, and, and this sickness it, it, it was it was a it was a grave sickness. It was a real sickness, and and so Jesus, uh, when Jesus gets this report, Israel, it really shocked me at what he said. What Jesus says in the fourth verse, he says, "This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified." Now, I, I got really uh, uh, that that verse really stood out to me, Shanae, because when you see Jesus' response, he doesn't address the condition. He addresses the purpose. Purpose. Uh, uh, he doesn't even address, uh, he doesn't get caught up that, that the, for, for why Lazarus is being sick. He gets caught up in the purpose of why Lazarus is being sick. And so sometimes when we are going through afflictions and we are going through hardship, we get so caught up in the condition, but we don't get caught up in the purpose of what we're going through. And I came to tell somebody today that anytime God has put you through a trial, anytime God has put you through some testing and some tribulation, don't get caught up in the condition. Get caught up in the purpose of why you're in it. And what Jesus says, he doesn't even really address Lazarus' sickness. He said it's not about Lazarus. It's about the glory of God being real. I came to tell you that what you're going through is not even about you. It's about the glory of God. It's about the glory of God being real. I know you've been crying. I know you've been sad. I know it's been hard. But it's about the glory. God is using your situation to bring him glory. God is using your situation to bring him glory. God is using your trials and your tribulations to bring him glory. He doesn't even address it. The Bible says, uh, Latoya, that, that after he says this, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, now Jesus, he loves Lazarus. He, uh, he loved Martha and he loved her sister Mary. The Bible says that after he hears this, he stays two days. He gets this report, but, but Jesus doesn't move immediately, Israel. He, he stays two days. And I'm the type of person, when I'm reading something, I like to ask God questions. And I ask the Father, I said, why would you stay two days? And you know that Lazarus was sick. And God told me, he said, son, because I was trying to work out, I was working stuff out in the background. See, see many of times when we are going through stuff and God doesn't move as quickly as we want him to move, we think that that is an indication of denial. But I came to hear, I came to tell you that the Spirit of the Lord says that just because it's been delayed, it hasn't been denied. I know some of us have been waiting on God to move. I know some of us have been waiting on God to shift some situations out. But I came to tell you today that it has not been denied. It's only been delayed. And sometimes God to work patience out in us. Yes, so I know we don't want to hear that because we live in a generation where everything is microwaved and everything is fast, but I can't tell you God don't work like that. I don't care if it takes five years, ten years, God's going to do exactly what he said. He's going to do it. He doesn't lie. If he told you what he told you, it's going to happen. You just got to wait on the Lord. You got to wait. You got to wait on the Lord. The Bible says <laughs> the Bible says that he stayed two days and then after two days he finally tells the disciples he tells the disciples Latoya, he says let's go to Judea uh -huh. uh, he says let's go back to the place that I just left where they were trying to stone me oh, yeah. uh, he says let's go back to the place yeah, where yeah. I, they were just trying to kill me the disciples had a problem with that though they said, hold on, wait a minute. Why do you want to go back to a place where they were just trying to stone you? I love Jesus' response, Kanika, because he said something very strategic around the ninth verse. He says, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Verse 10, but if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. Um, Jesus, he tells the disciples, uh, he, he tells the disciples, I'm not scared that they're trying to stone me. I have an assignment. Oh my God. I don't care that they're trying to do something to me. I gotta go down to Judea and raise a man from the dead. See, some of us, we get scared when we feel, when we, because we're living in a time where people are really trying to bully uh, Christians. 
Christians, they're really trying to bully our faith. And some of us are really being bullied by these people and being scared. But you've got to have the same stamina as Jesus and say, I ain't scared of nobody. you got to be a soldier. We ain't got no punks in the kingdom. Not at all. I said, we ain't got no punks in the kingdom. I said, I'm, I'm not going at night to work miracles. I'm going right in the day. I'm going right on the corners where they don't want me to be. I'm going to the enemy's territory where they don't want me to go. And I'm decreeing and declaring that the earth is still the Lord's. And the fullness that are up. I ain't scared. I'm on an assignment. I said I'm on an assignment. I got something to do. the host of heaven behind me. I said, I got the host of heaven behind me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? These stones ain't gonna do nothing to me. So I tell to encourage this generation, y'all stop being scared to live for God. You stop being scared to live right. I don't care if they not living holy. You live holy. We've got to take a standard in the earth. I said, we've got to take a standard in the earth. After the Holy Ghost Glory. tells him, you ain't going at night. Thank you, Lord. Right in the day. That's right. I got something to do. He tells them, they look at him, Israel, and they're like, what? Okay, Jesus, you crazy, but we going with you. <laughs> Jesus says something to them. He says, okay, let us go and wake up Lazarus. They get confused by this because. They don't get the word that Lazarus is dead, so uh -huh. they respond to Jesus and they say, why are we waking this man up? He all right. When he done resting, he going to get up. Mm -hmm. They didn't really understand what Jesus was saying. These are the disciples that are walking with him, yeah. and they don't discern what he's saying. Uh -huh. ah, oh my God. These are the people that he was just defending in chapter number 10 that says, my sheep know my voice. Yeah, yeah. But now that he's speaking, they don't understand it. They don't understand uh, it. And that's what's happening to the church today. Jesus is speaking and we're still confused as the church. No, Come on. Not. He's speaking and he's saying stuff to us and we're still trying to figure oh, out. Not. And some of us are still just getting comfortable, but the signs of the time are really here and he's really coming and, and, and he's really coming and the church is chilling. How can we be chilling and he's on his way. I said he's on his way. He's speaking. He's speaking and the disciples are confused. And so he comes down to I love Jesus because he will always come down to our level. He comes down to their level. He said Lazarus is dead. Come on. He's dead. And we gotta go get him. You hear me? And they said, okay, we go. Uh we 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 we're going. I love Thomas because Thomas in the in the in, in this is doubting Thomas. Thomas uh, in the 16th verse, he says something, Lady Nell. Yeah, yeah. He says, okay, he tells that he turns to the disciples and he tells them, he says, let us go and die with Jesus. Yeah. Oh my God. Now, he tells them, he says, let us go. If they go down to Jerusalem and they stone Jesus, let them stone us too. See, that's what really, that's how you really know if you really about this yeah. walk with God. If you Jesus, he, he makes his way. I'm almost done. Jesus, he makes his way. He makes his way to go see Martha and Mary. He makes his way, uncle, to go raise Lazarus. The Bible says that he is on his journey. He's on his journey there. While Jesus is on his way, Martha and Mary are at a funeral. Yeah. Martha and Mary, they are at a funeral and they are mourning and they're crying. The Bible actually says that there were people that went there to comfort them. Now, back in those times, they used to have professional mourners. Yeah. They used to have yeah. people who were really assigned to go and yeah. mourn with you Lord. and cry with you. Martha and Mary are in the season of mourning. And Martha, she gets a word, Shanae, that Jesus is on his way. Uh -huh. right? uh, and as she, as at the funeral, and bless my spirit when I read it, as she was at the funeral, she hears that Jesus is on his way. And she stops her mourning process and she goes to run to Jesus. 
Oh my God. And some of us, we I know when we're going through stuff, Genesis, I know when we're going through stuff, it gets hard and it gets sad. But I wish that we had more Marthas in the earth. That even while I'm in my season of going through, I hear Jesus coming, so I'm going to him. And I came to encourage you that even while you are going through, even while you're in the middle of what you're going through, you've got to have the tenacity to still get to Jesus. I gotta get to him. I, I gotta get to him. Lady Nell, when Pastor Jabari died, my godfather, I lost my mind. I was going through. I was doing stuff that I wasn't supposed to do. I was drinking. I was doing stuff. But I had to get to Jesus. Because I found out that the alcohol couldn't do it. I found out that even the weed couldn't do it. But when I got to Jesus, when I ran to Jesus, he gave me something that satisfied my spirit. Satisfies. He's the God that fills every void. He's the ultimate void filler. If you let him in, you gotta let him in. I said, you gotta let him in, Zion. You got to let him in. I had to get to Jesus. She runs to Jesus. She says something very strategic. She says, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. You would have been here. My Haven, she says, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Mm. But she says something that I love that we skip over in scripture. She says, but even now. Even now. God, she says, even now, I know that God hears from you. Hey. And so I got excited because most of the time when we get to the bottom of our situation and the things seem like they're running out, we lose faith. Uh -huh. But I wish we had the faith of Martha that even when we are at a funeral, even when things are dead all around us, I still know that God can still do it. Is there anybody in here that got an even now faith? That God, I know it's hard. God, I don't see no way out. But even now, I still believe. I don't know how you're going to pull me out of this. But even now, I still believe. I don't know how you're going to draw me out. But even now, I still believe. All power rests in your hand. I still believe. I still even believe. Now. She says, even now. Yeah. She says, even now. Yeah. I, I still believe. Still. Jesus tells her something. Even now. And I came when I heard this. The Lord told me to declare this prophetically in this house. He tells her, He says, Your brother will rise again. Yes. Yes. I don't know what has been dead in your life. I don't know if your visions have been dead. But I came to tell you today that it's going to rise again. It's I don't know if your dreams been dead. Some of us have been losing faith in our purpose. But I came to prophetically declare to you today that it's going to rise again. It's going to rise again. It's going to rise again. Hallelujah. Your brother will rise. Martha. She. Here's another indication. For Martha. She got a little mixed up. Uh, here's another sheep. Uh, of Jesus that is not understanding his voice. Ah. Mm. She says something. I know that he will rise. She goes from saying, even now I know that you can do something yeah. to say when Jesus said your brother will rise again. She says, I know in the last day of the resurrection, on the last day, yeah. in the resurrection of the saint. And Jesus said, why well, wait till the last day? Right. He says something to her in the 25th verse. He tells her, I am the resurrection. I am. I, I am the resurrection. And he says, anyone that believes in me, yes. let you know, shall never die. Never. We don't believe that. Come on. That in God is life. Yes. And God comes to give us a life. And life, life is more abundantly. Do you understand that? And so he tells her, you don't have to wait till the last day. Here I am now. And that's what God is trying to say to us today. Because some of us only believe that we're going to get our blessings when we get on the other side. But I came to declare you that he's not just the God of the heaven. He's the God of the earth. Oh my God. And God says, I'm going to do it for you right now. Right now. I'm going to do it for you right now. You ain't got to wait. Do you know who I am? I'm the resurrection. Everything that's dead in your life, I can bring life to it. If I just speak to the thing, that thing is going to give life. I can, you just one word away from God resurrecting your situation. He tells her, I am 
and the resurrection. Yes. But this is this is something. Uh, he tells her. He asks her a question. He says, "But do you believe?" Yes. He said, "Do you believe that I am the resurrection?" Mm -hmm. Good question. <laughs> Martha responds. I have a problem with Martha's response, Israel. And people would look at this and they say, how can you have a problem with this? If you look in the 27th verse, she says, she said that to him, yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, mm -hmm. the son of the living God. She said, which come into the world. Mm -hmm. I, I have a problem with this because she never answers the question. Yeah. He says, do you believe that I am the resurrection? Yeah, yeah. When he was asking her, do you believe that I can resurrect your situation? Yeah. She responds and says, you're the Christ. She says, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus is now, I believe, uh, Jesus is now uh, speculating the, the atmosphere of this moment. Because when we look at this text, the Bible tells us, Kanika, that Jesus is seeing the professional mourners. Yeah. They're mourning with Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. We see that... Uh, we see that the professional mourners they're mourning with Mary and Martha we see that this whole atmosphere is filled with unbelief mm. Mm. this whole that the miracle worker is in the vicinity uh -huh, uh -huh. and nobody believes when we get to the 35th verse Israel mm. we see the shortest scripture in the Bible and it says Jesus wept, he wept. Now, now, now I have a new perspective on this verse because a lot of us would preach this text and they would say that Jesus went because Lazarus died. But I have a new perspective as I begin to study this and really get the context of what was happening in the environment. I got an indication that Jesus was not crying because Lazarus was dead. Jesus was crying because there was dead faith in the atmosphere. Oh, I feel the Holy I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how many times that we as the body of Christ have made Jesus 
Jesus cry because of our unbelief. Oh my God. I wonder how many times have we made heaven weep because we don't believe God and God doesn't move when we want him to move. All this thing really convicted me, Israel, because God has delivered me. He's changed my mind. He's changed my perspective. He saved me. He freed me. He gave me a whole business that I did not go to school for. He gave me clients. He gave me everything. And there's still times where I still don't believe him. How dare I don't believe him when he's proven himself to me. My God. That's so good. And so we see that the disciples who are with Jesus, the disciples who are with Jesus, they're with him. They don't believe. Mary and Martha, who is his friends, who he loved. The Bible lets us know that they're close friends with him, so they know how Jesus operates. They know that he's a miracle worker. And they still don't believe. And then we have professional mourners. Oh my God. We have professional mourners. So this whole atmosphere is full of disbelief. My God. And the Bible says that Jesus wept. Now, the mourners, they got confused, Genesis, because they were like, oh, my God, Jesus, he's crying because he loves Lazarus. He's crying because he loves Lazarus. And I believe that he did cry because he loves Lazarus. But then I got upset at these Jews, Israel, because they was really trying to play my God. They was really trying to play my Savior. And they said something that I did not like. And the 37th verse, Latoy, and it says, some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Uh, so now this is what they're doing is they're trying to put Jesus on trial. And that's what we do in the church. We put Jesus on trial. They're saying uh, he gave sight to the blind, but he could heal this sick man. Uh And that's what we do to God all the time. We say, God, you brought me out of this situation, but I'm losing faith in this situation. You brought me out of that situation, but now that I'm in this situation, I don't believe. I I don't see how you're going to bring me out. And we've got to get to a place in God where we mature as a church, where we stop putting the Savior on trial. That's That's right. right. That's right. we got to stop putting him on on trial. The Bible says, he says, take me to where you lay here. Uh-huh. They, they take Jesus to where they laid him. The Bible says that he tells them, he gets there. The Bible says he's groaning in his spirit. He's groaning in his spirit. He's grieving in his spirit. Yeah. The Bible says, tell him, move this stone away. Martha says, Jesus, we can't move this stone away because he's been dead for four days. Mm. And if we move this stone, it's going to stink. Now, the number four, it comes up in this chapter several times. It says several times that uh, Lazarus has been dead for four days. Mm -hmm. When we do our research, Israel, on that, what we discover is that there was a custom uh, in the Jewish culture that believed that after a person died, that their spirit uh, had the possibility to hover over them for three days Mm -hmm. and had the possibility for the spirit to go back into the body. Uh, so now we see when we look at the context of this miracle that's getting ready to happen that Jesus literally defies cultural come odds on. Oh, come on Jesus God. and Jesus he literally he breaks cultural barriers yeah. because now they are in their mindset three days have passed the spirit is not going back in the body we are on day four Lazarus is dead dead yeah. Yeah, yeah. but Jesus says uh, but the miracle worker is here ah. <laughs> somebody that God says in this season I'm using this generation I'm going to perform miracle signs and wonders in this generation that the world has never seen before God says I'm going to use I got to believe that God says I'm going to use you Yes, Lord. He says, I'm going to use you to perform miracles and defy cultural odds so that my glory can be revealed. Yes, Hallelujah. I got excited, ladies and gentlemen. This 
message really was for me because I got a report on Wednesday, Lady Mel, yes. uh, about my nephew uh, who has stage four uh, bone cancer. And, and the doctors told us that this, on this Wednesday that just passed, they told us to start preparing our house for hospice uh, because they told us that he's getting ready to transition, Lady Nell. That's what ah. they said. And, and they said that uh, when, when the cancer gets to this stage, there's nothing left that they can do. But I got excited when I read this because I believe that God is going to blow the minds of God. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that God is going to blow the mind of science. Is there anybody that's going to believe with me? Can we just take 30 seconds to praise God for my nephew's healing? I believe that God is going to do something that has never been done before. God, blow our mind. Blow our mind. Blow our mind. Blow the mind of the doctor. I'm excited when I read it. I start crying, but when I start studying, I said, God, in things that seem impossible. Yay! I said you specialize in stuff that seem impossible. God called my mind once again. Glory. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Yeah. I'm crazy enough to believe that we got to go out and prepare my house for hospice. Put the machines in my house. The devil is a liar. I I don't need machines when I got the miracle worker. Yeah. Stop talking to people and talk that's to God. Right, right. You got to become a spiritual. 
spiritual maturity where you stop to stop to where you stop trying to seek counsel from man and you've got to go read Isaiah where they call him a wonderful counselor what? they call him a wonderful counselor and I believe in therapy but sometimes you've got to stop talking to your therapist and talk to God yes well, well. that's it and, yes. and oh, yeah. he talks to God because he understands uh -huh. that in order for me to do what I need to do, I can only talk to the Father. Yeah, yeah. He, but he tells them, he says, Father, I know you hear me, and I know you heard me, but God, I'm talking to you, he says, so they can believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh they. Uh. He said, Lord, I already know our connection, but they got a disconnection from you. Oh. But, but Father, let's really do what we do so they can believe. the disciples yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's talking to God to help him perform this miracle so that the church which is the Jews that was around so that the church can believe wow. oh, my oh, oh my God yeah. he says father I need you to help me do this so they don't lose faith that you really sent me yes calls Lazarus and he says Lazarus he says Lazarus come forth when you study Lazarus' name, you understand that Lazarus' name is means the God who helps. Mm. Mm. When God shows up and helps. So when he called Lazarus, what he was saying, Lazarus, help is here. And I heard the Lord say that every time I call your name, it's an indication that help is here. So when next time you hear me call, you Lazarus popped up out of the grave yeah, yeah. immediately. Immediately. I love this because the Bible says that when is uh, when, oh, why, why, Israel, this message must be for you, man of God. The Bible says that when Lazarus came up out of the grave, the Bible says he was still bound in his grave clothes. Well, yeah. he had the grave clothes on him. Yes, he did. He was raised up. But he wasn't loosed. Uh -huh. The Bible says that he tells the people that are around him yeah. to loose him. Loose him. That's right. Uh, and, and I came, I, I, that when I read that, GC, it, it, it gave me a new indication of who I really want in my circle. All right. Because I believe God can raise me, but can the people around me loose me? Hey, that's good. Can the people around me loose me? And to, see, that's why I came to preach to the young people today. You've got to take a new perspective of who your friends is because God is going to use you, but you are your friends able to lose you until the assignment that God has for your life? This is the season for you to check your circle. Check, 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 check it. It's good. And the Bible says that they lost him. Yes. Let's get to our highlight of the text and I'm done. When I read John 11 45 and 53, I literally wept. Ah. I cried. Because I couldn't. I had a new prayer. We always preach Lazarus come forth, but we never finish the chapter. Uh, uh -huh, mm. uh -huh. We see now that the chief priests and the councils of the church, they're having a meeting now. They're having a meeting. Jesus has performed this miracle on Lazarus. Lazarus has come out of the grave, and the church is having a meeting about Jesus. Yeah. Doing miracles. Uh -huh. They're upset because Jesus for three years. This is this 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 is one of Jesus' last miracles. And the Bible lets us know that 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 this literally that after Jesus let me go back. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Slow me down. So we understand when we get to this part of the chapter that the church is having a meeting. They're saying that what are we gonna do about this man named Jesus? Mm. He's performing miracles. Yeah. He's, 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 he's doing great things. Mm -hmm. He's doing great exploits. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do about this? Uh, they got mad that people were getting killed. Mm. They got mad that real ministry was happening. See, anytime people, uh, Kanika, uh, try to shine the light and get mad at real ministry going forth, it's just an indication that they ain't really doing nothing. They ain't doing 
Amen. Amen. People will always get mad at when real ministry, Latoya, is taking place. Uh, they'll always be, why would you get mad that people are being killed and being delivered and someone just got raised from the dead and we're going to have a meeting about this? Why are we having a meeting? We should be having a celebration. Right. Come on now. They got upset. They were mad. They were upset that Jesus was getting famous. They were mad because they became irrelevant. Yeah. That right. ministry will eventually always become irrelevant. Yes, it will. Right. Yes, it will. Yes. Speak, I know it because I came from a traditional church where they wasn't really doing nothing. And now it's irrelevant. Come on. Come on. It will always, they were, they were becoming irrelevant. They were saying, Lady Nell, they yes. were saying, we got to do something about this man named Jesus. <laughs> if we don't do something, he's going to become more famous than us. And then the Roman Empire is going to come over and take over our nation. Mm. So they said, let's kill him. They have a meeting about let's kill him. Mm, my God. But we cannot understand this text until we go back to John 11 verse 4 where Jesus says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. Yeah. Jesus strategically decided to perform this miracle on Lazarus because he knew, he knew that it would bring him attention. Yeah. And he knew that once he raised Lazarus from the grave, yeah. it would position him to go in the grave. Right. See, that's why we call this message the Great Exchange. Yeah. Because he took on this robe of yeah. He took on this robe of flesh. Yeah. And he decided to call Lazarus out of the grave so that he can die for you and me. Come on. The great exchange. That's why we call this message the great exchange. Yes. That's real. That's why our opening scripture today was 2 Corinthians 5 21. Uh -huh. He who knew no sin. He became sin for us. Yes. I felt it when I read this, I fell in love with Jesus all over again. Yes, Lord. Because everything that the enemy desired to do for me, do to me, I deserved it. There's stuff that I even done to myself. Yes. I deserved it. My God. But God, He came. He yes, came. He, he came. He came. He came and rescued me. Oh. Is there anybody that's glad that He rescued you? Oh. Is there anybody that's glad that He saved you? Oh. Is there anybody that's glad that when you deserve to die, he gave you life? And life that you might have it more abundantly, you can sit and be bougie if you want to. But there's a some of us that's grateful that he gave us a life. And we know that we deserve death. Yes, to my grave. That's why he said I'm the resurrection and those who believe in me shall have eternal life. Yes. He knew that once he raised Lazarus from the grave, we're done. Step to our feet. He knew that when he raised Lazarus to the grave, that he would position him to go to the grave. Ah, he knew that. Jesus. Who would not serve God like this? Jesus. Jesus. My God. He oh, that's good. That is good. Yes. Oh, yeah. Who would not serve God like this? Who? That when he was trying to save his people. Jesus. Who he called from the beginning. When he tried to, when he decided to save us, uh -huh. he stopped using lambs. Mm. And he used himself. Yes, oh, Jesus. Worthy. My God. Hallelujah. I Hallelujah. fell in love with him all over yes. again. When I read this, because that it just lets good. us know that he's a good God. Yes. 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 He's a good God. So let us always Jesus. remember Hallelujah. that God has made an exchange with us. Hallelujah. I said, let us always remember, church, that God has made an exchange yes. with us. Yes. And I need you, push play, Louis. I, I need you to keep your end of the bargain. Yes. That's what God is saying. Yes. All you gotta do, this whole text was just about belief, Kanika. Yeah, it, it was about belief. And we've been in church for years. And we still don't believe him. Jesus. Help us. Help us. We've got to get like the man that brought his son to Jesus when the disciples couldn't cast the demon out of him. Uh huh. And he told Jesus, he said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. We've got to get to a place like God. I do believe you in this area, but I really need you to 
to help me over here. Help me, help me, help me, help me. I need you to help. I trust you. I trust you with my job, but I really, Father, see, God wants that, Israel. I, I trust you with my job, but I really don't trust you in relationships, Father. Come on, Father. Too many times, and I really don't trust you. And we got to get to a point where you become honest with God. Yes. Why not become honest with a God that already knows everything? Everything. He knows everything. Who would not serve a God like that? So today, I pray that we will always, Genesis, I pray that we will always, unto, I pray that we will always understand always. that Christ has made an exchange with us. Yes, always. And he's wonderful. Wonderful. Father, we thank you today. We glorify you. We honor you. We lift you up. Yes. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Father, because you have made a great exchange with us. Yes. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, we thank you, Father. Father, forgive us for the times when we did not believe. Forgive us, Lord. We repent today. Yes, God. Oh, yeah. I said we repent today. We repent today. The times when we had disbelief. And you've already proven yourself unto us. Yes. Woe unto us, Father. Yes. You've proven yourself. You've healed us, you've delivered us. Yes. And we still lack faith. So, Father, today we're like the son. We're like the man that brought his son to you. Yes. Sir. And he says, Father, we believe. But, God, we ask today that you help our unbelief. Help us. Yes. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help our unbelief. Help thank our you. unbelief. We honor you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you that you made a great exchange with yes. us. Yes, Lord. We'll do our best to never take that for granted. We honor you. We love you. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we will always pray. Amen. Always. Can you put your hands together for Jesus one more time?